Thank you everybody for coming tonight. To give a little background, these four students here on the front row, Aloysius, Aloysa, Jonathan, and Aya, have been writing pieces from January to March, and some of these pieces in even a shorter time. The goal of these classes between January and March that I taught them was to use what they knew about music to create music, using the paradox of learning, learning music through writing music. We did classes for these three months, and when they wrote all these pieces that you are going to hear tonight. Everything you'll hear tonight is sacred music um, from church use. So being said, it would be greatly appreciated um, to hold the applause to the very end and just to say amen or anything that you feel works best, as it is intended to glorify God. There will be a time for applause at the end, as I mentioned. I would also like to thank the staff here at Faithway for all of their help and thank Pastor Wall for letting me use this space. Before we begin, I would love to ask Pastor Wall to come and pray for us. And just before I pray, if you would make certain your phone is on silent or uh, shut off or thrown out the window, whatever, <laughs> so it doesn't disrupt what's going on tonight, that would be wonderful. All right, let's pray. Father, we do thank you for the gift of music and how we are able to worship you because of music and how it communicates your uh, beauty, your holiness, and how it, it does resonate with our heart. So we do pray that you would bless our time together uh, and that you would be honored in everything that is said and done. For it's your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. To begin the year... Each student wrote a piece for children's ministry use, but to be honest, it could be used for any use and for all ages. These are courses that hold deep truths of God's word with creative and fun piano accompaniments. And I will warn you, they are very catchy. <laughs> um, Jesus Cares for Me, written by Aloysius, and I Will Not Be Afraid, written by Aloysa, will now be sung by Evie, Coral, and Colin. Jesus cares for me. Jesus cares for me. 
I just wanted to add as well that our little singers are actually little composers too. And this next piece they composed and sent to me. So this song is called, I'm So Happy. The next piece that we have is written by Jonathan. It is called Sunday School, and we're actually going to have his siblings come up and sing with the Parkinson kids. So here is also Joyce and Jonathan.
Throughout teaching each of these students, I learned little things about each of them. They all have different strengths, styles, goals, personalities, and I have a favorite story from each of them where their God-given talent shone through. One week we did a workshop class where everyone could work on their pieces, ask questions, and write songs in class. I gave each of them a hymn book telling them to find a hymn and to rewrite the melody. Aloysius came back 20 to 30 minutes later and played for me what you are actually about to hear. I just remember going, you're gonna use this, right? The chords that he chose were beautiful and being knowledgeable about theory and harmony, he had a purposeful movement of these chords that speak to the beautiful text the hymn, of the hymn that he chose. This is Tell It to Jesus, rearranged by Aloysius and sung by Chloe Smith. Be not silent from me, 
Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry to thee. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. And with my song will I praise him. This is unto you will I cry, written and sung by Aloysa and I. of two songs, How Can I Fear, written by Ron Hamilton, also known as Patch the Pirate, and the old hymn, His Eyes on the Sparrow. Ron Hamilton, as some of you know, was one of the most well-known sacred music composers. Having passed away this past April, he left a legacy of approximately a thousand hymns. In his passing is a gap and a lack of new sacred music. A leading factor in this project of mine was to show church musicians high schoolers, and college students, that they too can write music. This next piece is called He Watches Over Me, written by Jonathan Bellevue.
This next piece is a solo written by Eloisa. My favorite story is when she began to show me lyrics for her pieces. The words she writes hold so much authenticity and relatability. She told me she was working on a duet piece. We emailed back and forth a bit about other pieces, but at this point, I hadn't heard anything of the piece itself. She sent me an MP3 of her singing it, and I began to cry. The words she wrote were so relatable and true to real circumstances, and the melody she wrote painted the words in such a beautiful picture. Don't You Know, her duet, will be shared later, as well as her story behind the composition. This next piece is her solo, God is Here. The chorus says, God is here. He sees you where you are, and when all feels lost, he's never really far. God is here. The title of my song is God is There. God is There is a comp composition born out of a period of confusion and frustration in my life, inspired by recognition of God's omnipresence in every circumstance. The song I wrote serves as a reminder of God's comforting presence. 
The first stanza reflects my progression from confusion and uncertainty to the realization of God's presence. The first stanza begins with this line. Lord, I come to you today with questions in my mind. My heart is full of sorrow. Healing words are hard to find. And through my introspection in the second stanza, I acknowledge that my confusion may result in straying from God's will, ultimately finding solace in the reassurance of God's presence. The second stanza begins with, I wandered off the path that God had given me, searching for happiness from things that please me. In the chorus, the repeated emphasis of God's presence offers hope and reassurance to the doubting or hopeless Christian. The final words of the chorus implores, turn to your Savior, he's always there. Musically, God is there is rep- as characterized by a repetitive chord progression that mirrors the cyclical nature of life's troubles. The use of the minor fourth, secondary dominance, convey a sense of longing, heartbreak, and uncertainty. The downward chromatic progression in the climax of the chorus further enhances the emotional intensity by highlighting moments of overwhelming care. In the final moments of my song, the message rings clear. Regardless of the circumstances, God is always there. Through trials and tribulations, he remains a constant source of strength and guidance. The final words of my song answers my questions and my wanderings by realizing that God is there.
next piece was written by Aya. Aya uses scripture in her lyrics to fill her pieces with doctrine, comfort, and truths necessary for every individual. My favorite story of Aya was her telling me about this, so this solo. I just sat down and it came to me, she said. That can only be God, is what I told her. As I listened to her sing it for me in class and then send me a final recording, I couldn't help but smile and I couldn't help but singing it. I couldn't get her song out of my head. Around the house, doing dishes, cleaning, even at work, at Starbucks, I was singing her song. And the words hold such beautiful scripture. Psalm 4610 says, be still and know that I am God. Six one says, God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. This verse has stuck with me ever since I was a little kid. This whole chapter in Psalms talks about the presence of God in calamity or trouble. I've titled this original, Be Still and Know, because it refers to verse 10. This psalm has always reminded me that God is greater than any war or any trouble, and that God is always with us. My inspiration for the lyrics of this psalm came from the psalm. It was a Sunday afternoon, and I was stressing. This was only two, week two weeks ago. I wanted to write a solo for myself, but I wanted it to have words that portrayed a mes message I personally related to. These words came from a diary entry I wrote a long time ago, when I was going through something and I only tried to rely on myself. I realized then that God was speaking to, through, to me through Psalm 46, verse 1, and in verse 10, which says, Be still and know that I am God. These words have always rung in my head throughout my life when I was scared, stressed, and sad. The verses in my solo are quiet and calm, with the lyrics talking about how calm we should be when God is our refuge. For the piano accompaniment in the choruses, I wanted it to sound like a storm raging, with ominous 16th notes and some minor chords. And then it slowly fades to a piano when I sing, He is God. Be Still and Know is a recurring line in my solo, especially in the bridge, to remind us that God remains faithful and in control. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jonathan Bellevue is known for his surprises in my class. As homework, they did exercises where they took lyrics that I wrote and were to come to class the next week with chords, maybe a melody, or anything that they wanted to share and an idea for a song. They didn't need to write it out. They just had the chance to talk about a plan for a song and even maybe showed a recording in class. When it came to Jonathan's turn to share, he pulled out his laptop, and showed me a full orchestrated piece in the making with those lyrics that I wrote. Since then, uh, we couldn't get an orchestra for tonight. He rewrote it as a choir piece with piano. This is He Goes Before.
Don't You Know was inspired by a story about a man who had to sacrifice his son in order to save passengers on a train. In an adapted version of the story, the author draws parallels between man's sacrifice for the train's passengers to God's sacrifice of sending his son for mankind. In my piece, it uses constant stepwise patterns in the melody, showing God's persistent plea to the sinner, asking if they understand the great sacrifice he made for them. This stepwise motif was also used to emphasize the hook every time the lyric, don't you know, appears. A downward diatonic progression of the chords is used in the first verse to show the end of the phrases, where God is quote unquote speaking, and is also used in my second verse to help with the phrasing. In the pre-chorus, minor chords are used to express God's sorrow when the sinner rejects his sacrifice and love for them. The chords lead into the chorus, where the repeated line, don't you know, sets the stage for further explanation about what the sinner fails to grasp. The choruses have the same lyrics, except for the first chorus where it uses the pronoun I to show God's direct communication. The bridge delves deeper into the reason behind God's sacrificial act. The lyrics draw from the familiar verse, John 3, 16, where it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Once again, the dynamics build to the chorus. The hook, don't you know, is repeated several times by the soprano voice at the end, with a tenor voice echoing parts of lyrics from the original chorus. During one of the repetitions of don't you know, the voice is built singing notes from a minor chord, holding suspense to emphasize God's plea for the sinner to reflect on the sacrifice he made for them. The main hook for my song, Don't You Know, echoes the lines from the adapted story, serving as a reminder of God's selfless sacrifice for humanity. Don't you know what I've done for you? I sent my only son to this earth for you. He died a terrible death so that you could have eternal life. Don't you know? Don't you care that I love you? Don't you 
about evangelism and witnessing, I realized that there are actually no songs that talk about how to get saved. So it may, it may talk about how Jesus saves, but he saved from what? Or rescue the perishing, but why are we perishing? <clears throat> so I sought um, this opportunity to write this song, and the words are very simple. So at the end, you could actually step out here knowing that you could go to eternity. So here's the story. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Why, you may ask? Well, here is the story.
For coming today. Uh, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Special thanks to Mr. Parkinson running our sounds. <laughs> Mr. Loraya for running our live stream. had to balance a lot of this with extra classes and, and things. I hope that this music was a blessing, and I know for each of them that they wanted it to be a blessing to you too. I hope that ultimately that God received the glory for all of their hard work and sharing their talents with you tonight. God is a God who comforts. This story is true. It's, it's not, it's not make-believe. It's not something random that people made up. It's true, and everything that Jonathan spoke about is true. God listens, he is present, he saves, he comes before you, he goes behind you, he leads you, and he protects you. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 shares the words of Jesus himself, saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. God does not want bad things to happen to you. He doesn't, he doesn't do those things. He thinks only of you. And Psalm 139 says, How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. The Lord knows you. Personally, he says, cast your cares upon me. He says, come to me. He promised rest. He promised hope. He's loving. And he says, all is well.
Thank you all so very much for coming and have a good night.